chapter 19, I'm excuse me, chapter 20, and I want to read verses 7 through 9, and then 11, 7 through 9, and then 11 of Jeremiah chapter 20. Just catch up with me when you get there, amen? Verse 7 says, O oh Lord, you induced me, and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I and have prevailed. I am in derision daily, which means I am in fear on every side. He says, everyone mocks me. For when I spoke, I cried out. I shouted violence and plunder. Because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. Then I said, here we go. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. Jeremiah said, I'm not going to talk about God no more. I'm not going to bring his word forth anymore. They mocking me? Uh -uh. I'm not done. Look, I got fear on every side right now. I'm not dealing with this. How yeah, yeah, yeah. I many know that you can't outdo that? Come on, man. And it's interesting because in verse 1, he starts off saying, you are what? You, uh, you induced me, and I was persuaded because what? You are stronger than I. Yeah, yeah. But at some point, he says, I'm not going to speak God's word. Wow. I'm not even going to make mention of him. Uh -huh. Nor speak anymore in his name. Hello. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. Verse 11. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, awesome one. I'm going to stop right there. We're not going to read, finish reading verse 11. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, awesome one. Amen? Amen. Now, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water, says John the Baptist. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen? Amen? Come on, stay with me. Yeah. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. When the day of Pentecost yes. had fully come, mm -hmm. they were all with one accord in one place. Yeah. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Yeah. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Mm -hmm. Then there appeared to them Divided tongues as of fire. Wow. I don't know something about this fire we're going to know what we're talking about. As of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There's one coming after me, John the Baptist says, who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Come on now. Yeah, man. Yeah. Amen. The day of Pentecost came. And there appeared tongues of what? Fire. That sat upon each of them. Jeremiah said what? It is like what? Fire. Shut up in my bones. This is talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost that we're going to talk about. Amen. I'm going to try to go ahead and do this. Y'all go work with me now. Pray for me. I had two weeks now. I've been meditating on this thing for two weeks now. Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you, Lord God, that we are assembled here to hear your word. And Lord, I myself am thankful, Lord God, that you have chosen me to speak your word today. And so, Lord, I know I can't do it without you. I need you to hide me behind the cross and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For then it shall be well with our souls. We will get all that you would have us to know. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. 
I've been running to Jesus a long time. And I'm not tired yet. Y'all ready for the subject? Praise God. It's the Holy Ghost and fire that makes me run for Jesus. It's the Holy Ghost and fire that makes me run for Jesus. I've been running for Jesus a long time because of the Holy Ghost and the fire. See, a couple of weeks ago, our last message, we said it was what? The anointing makes the difference. And we talked about the anointing is the blessings of God. And it's, it's what we need in order to glorify God, but it's also what we need in order to be effective for God. We can't bless somebody else without the anointing. And so we really came to understand that Jesus, or when he came and was baptized by John in the Jordan, that when he came up out of the water, the Bible says the Holy Spirit descended as a dove and remained on him. And from that moment on, Jesus began to do miracles. Jesus was now endued with power to go forth. Now you say, well, wasn't he God before then? Yes, but the Bible says in Philippians that he gave up. See, the Bible tells us like this. He came as a bond servant in the likeness of man. He did not think it was robbery to be equal with God, but he gave of himself of no reputation. He gave up the power because he had to operate like a man. He wanted to demonstrate how we can walk with the power of the Holy Ghost to be effective here on this world. So as Jesus goes, so go we. If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, so do we. Come on, y'all.
Let's just go there. Go with me to John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 3. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3, in those verse 1, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. But look at this. Now, John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Get that picture in your mind. John is out in the desert. He's eating wild, love. he's eating locusts and honey. And he's got a, a leather belt and, and camel's hair. You know, he, he's out there by himself and he's just shouting. Make straight the way of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, it is repent too. But he's, he's crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Man, you know, they got to think he must have been out of his mind. Out there by himself, eating locusts, and just shouting, and just crying. Yeah. What would it be like to go out here on the corner right now and have somebody out there just standing out there by himself, eating locusts and wild honey, and just saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Make straight the way of the Lord. But well, why don't you go in church? What we don't know is the Holy Ghost will make you do some strange things. The Holy Ghost will have you speaking in tongues. And you'll be thinking people are drunk. You can I go there for a moment? Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. Here it is. And they were filled, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, the Bible says, if you read down, that those that had assembled was from all over. They were every other nationality. They had other languages. And so when the, the disciples began to speak in other tongues, they were speaking in languages that they didn't even know how to speak in. If you are Chinese and I'm English and I don't speak Chinese, after the Holy Spirit came upon me, I started speaking Chinese and Greek and African and Asian and all the different the different languages the 12 of them well actually it was more than 12 but all of them began to speak in other languages and the people that heard them marveled they said I don't want that listen to this verse 6 and when the sound occurred the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not these all who speak Galileans? How is it they how is it that how is it that we hear each in our own language? In which we were born. They're they're saying something has happened. We don't understand. They must be drunk and they're just speaking gibberish. They something something has gone on. Verse 14. But Peter, crazy Peter, compactual, compelling and competuous Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. Peter says, wait a minute, y'all don't get it. This is not anything other than the feeling of the Holy Spirit that produced a fire in them that they were going to do whatever God wanted them to do, whether they wanted to do it or not. Amen? Amen. See, see, God wants to do some things in us. Hello. Amen. Amen. He wants to do some things in us. But see, we got the Holy Spirit because if you have been baptized in Jesus, hello, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. If you've been born again, see, you can't. Born again and not have 
Jesus left, they went back to doing their own thing. There was no fire. The Bible says, if you look in John chapter 20, right before Jesus, and that whole story where he says, do you love me, Peter, three times? Right before that, Peter had gone back fishing. And the Bible says, and the disciples left to go back with them. What happened to the fire that was supposed to be in them? Well, it hadn't come yet. The Bible says that Jesus breathed on them. Go turn with me if you would. John chapter 20. If you look in chapter 20 and verse 22, this is Jesus. It says, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, to the disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, when he said that, what he was saying to them, is he was prophesying, saying that, look, at some point, the Holy Spirit is going to come. Receive him. Because until you receive the Holy Spirit, it's you. You ain't got no passion. Look, when trouble comes your way, you will easily fall back. Because the passion of God is not
You saw that also with the centurion. They were all together, and I believe it was Paul preaching. I believe it was Paul or Peter. One of them was preaching. And the Bible says, him and his household were saved, and the Holy Spirit fell among them. And yes, it was Peter. Because it was using Peter as a, it was showing Peter that Peter, you have a problem. Even after you got saved, Peter, you have a problem with Gentiles. Yeah, You're believing that your gift and your message is supposed to be preached to the Jews. Well, yes, to the Jews first. But then to the Gentiles. And the Bible showed Peter a vision where God let down and, uh, all these kind of animals that were uncommon. And, and, and he let them down with the uh, four corners of the sheets and they came down. And, and the Lord said to, to Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter said, Lord, God forbid me to eat anything uncommon yeah. or anything common. Yeah. And Jesus says, don't you call common what the Lord has called uncommon. And he didn't understand it, but then he had this, this God that sent uh, uh, his servants, the centurion servants, to Peter. But God had already told Peter, somebody's coming and to go. And so when the servants of the centurion came to Peter and said, I'm sent by my, my master to come and get you, Peter had already known he was supposed to go, so he went. And when he gets there, he realizes, these are Gentiles. But I got it now, because that vision that God showed me, don't call what, what, what is uncommon, anything common, that God is blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, you know, and, and so Peter ended up going in and, and preaching the gospel. And the Bible says, and the Spirit of God came down and fell among them. And they were all filled. I just want to give you that as a little, a little side note, amen? Because, you know, we sometimes think that, and, and this is why, you know, this church, Purpose for Life Ministries, we don't look at any other church as division. It's Jesus' Lord. Amen. All the other stuff you want to debate about, that you can debate about that some other time, another time, whatever. But it's Jesus' Lord. If Jesus is Lord, if you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, if you confess that you're a sinner, and you repented of your sins, and you got born again, you're not and my sister. Amen. Regardless of all the other stuff, sometimes we divide the body of Christ because of our own intellect. Ah, come on, talk about it. He said, lean not on your own understanding. I understand. I understand. Amen. 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 That's the truth. So can I give you three questions to ponder? Oh, yeah, I'm not going to tell you the answers. I'm going to tell you the scriptures. And I might hint a little bit on the answers, amen? amen? But I want to share this with you. Because to be baptized with the Holy Ghost is just like baptism with the water in the sense that baptism itself means to be immersed. So if you're immersed with water, you're soaked. You go under completely and then you come up. When you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, it's the same thing. You're supposed to be soaked with the presence and the anointing of God. You're supposed to be all up in Him and He's all up in you. You're supposed to get a little bit of Jesus. Look, I want this a little bit more now. I want all of Jesus. I want everything He got for me. Amen. Amen. It's to be immersed. That's what baptism of the Holy Spirit means. It means to be covered completely from head to toe with the Holy Spirit. See, John says, I baptize you with water unto repentance. Even though we then sometimes go and get rebaptized in water, and then we'll get rebaptized and get the laying on of hands in the name of Jesus, it's not the water that did anything. The water is just you going through that process again. When you get laid hands on and you say that it's a Yeah. Mm, my God. 
We talk about that zeal, that power. Okay, the three questions. Amen. All right, here we go. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7 through 9. We read it already. The question is this. Are you zealous for the Lord? And what I mean is to serve the Lord, to be used by the Lord. See, these are signs that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. These are signs because if you got the Holy Spirit and no fire, you might not have the Holy Spirit. Jesus 
answered and said to Martha, 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 you are worried and troubled, troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. The question, too, is, do you have a zeal of desire to know who Christ is in your life? Do you really, after you leave church, and you're thinking, driving down the street by yourself, or sitting at home, or wherever you are, does anything stir up in you that says, I, you know, I want to hear God's voice more? I, I want to I experience a new level of relationship in Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit's job is to connect us yeah. to God. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's job is to keep us so well connected that regardless, look, you can serve the Lord, I'm going to sit with the Lord. Amen? Now, now, when Jesus gets up and goes on to do something else, then I'll get up and start serving. Amen? But right now, he's in our midst. What if Jesus walked down here in this hour in the middle of our praise and worship? Yes, all eyes will stop and look. The Bible says every, even when an angel would appear before men, they would just fall like dead men. Imagine us if Jesus came through those doors. Would you have this burning desire in to just want to get close? I just want to get real close without being consumed. Because you know right now this flesh can only get us so close. Amen. You know, remember he got resurrected and Mary went to go clean to him. He said, how clean that me, Mary? Yeah, yeah. I have not yet accepted. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you can't be touching on me right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm being transformed as I go up. I'm being transformed yeah. from the old to the new. Amen. Amen. Mm. My God. Number three. Mm -hmm. And do you even know what the Holy Ghost and fire is. Do you even know? Now I know I shared something with you about that. Amen? Yeah. Turn with me if you would to Acts chapter 19. Verses 1 through 5. Listen to this. This is Paul out of Ephesus. And he says, And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. See, disciples are followers and learners of Christ. They want to they grow in their education and intellect about the Word and, and Jesus and everything He's teaching. I want to know that. But you might be still missing something. Because it says here, in finding some disciples, He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you were baptized? I mean, excuse me, when you, were, when you believed? Look at the answers. So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow, yeah. <laughs> they didn't even know the Holy Spirit existed. Wow. But hold on. Okay. He said to them, and to them, were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Yeah, yeah. Well, didn't John say, there's one that's coming after me, who is preferred before me? He will baptize you with what? The Holy Spirit and fire? So maybe they didn't hear the second part of John's out there in the wilderness. Maybe they just saw some crazy man out there just yelling and screaming and just thought, well, you know what? I hear some part of what he's saying. I know I'm a sinner. I need to, to be baptized unto repentance. And so let me go and get baptized by John. Maybe they missed the part that said, He, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Because see, here's what we do. Not we. Here's what happened. Back then, the only ones that knew about the Holy Spirit was from Jesus, outside of uh, John's preaching, was Jesus when he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Remember in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He says, tarry for the Holy Spirit. Wait for it before you go out. Because you're going to need some power. And until you get the Holy Ghost, which is the anointing, and the fire, which is the passion, you can't go out and do anything. 
And so they waited, and then the Holy Spirit came. And then you see them going out with boldness. At one point they said, listen, go back to me. This, this will be the last thing I'm going to give you questions again. But go back to Ch Acts chapter 3, I believe it is. No, chapter 4. And look at chapter 4 of Acts. And this is what happens when you get the Holy Ghost in fire. You don't care what comes your way. This is John and Peter. And it says in verse 17. No, we're going to pick up actually in verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, how did they see that boldness? That wasn't the same boldness that Peter had before. Something happened to Peter and John that caused them now to be so bold that, and look at us, what else it says? And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they didn't go to seminary. They didn't sit down and go through the, and get all the degrees. They sat with the Holy Spirit and they sat with Jesus and they received what they needed, the knowledge with the spiritual wisdom and understanding because they were with Jesus. It says, and they, they realized that they were uneducated and untrained men. They borrowed and, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against them. But when they had com commanded them to go outside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. Just so you know, this is when John and Peter had went and, and said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do in the name of Jesus, be healed. Arise and walk. And this man that had been, been uh, paralyzed for over 40 years had got up and began to walk, leap, and jump, and shout. And so the people saw that the miracle and said, well, we can't deny the miracle, but we can't let them continue on preaching Jesus because we don't want that name to be made known to the, the, the Jews that are of our time because it's becoming a little, you know, there's division here and more are going with Jesus than us. So it says here, so they conferred among themselves, verse 16, saying, what shall we do to these men, Peter and John? For indeed they are notable, for indeed that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But, verse 17, so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. Hello. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered, listen to this. Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to you to listen to you more than to God, you judge. But we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. One of the things I want you to know is that when you get the Holy Ghost and the fire of God, which is the passion, because see, God is in you and God wants Jesus to be glorified. And if God is in you, you want Jesus to be glorified. And what you will find is that even when people will try to forbid you to speak in that name, you will still speak in that name. Because even your pastor was told not to teach in the name of Jesus in a Christian church. And I said, well, I'm sorry. Hello. I said, I'm sorry. I got to speak in the name of Jesus. And they told me, well, you can't do it here. And I said, goodbye. And before I left, I taught in the name of Jesus. Because not to be disobedient, but because the, the person that had but was teaching the Bible study the night the week later had said, would you teach for me that day? And here's what we're teaching. And I said, okay. And so I had the teaching, but I also had the name of Jesus. And the teaching that they gave me was good teaching. But what happened was, when it came time for me to go to the Bible study, they canceled the Bible study. The pastor and whoever else, they canceled it. So I'm like, okay. But then they turned around and said, but we're having a minister's meeting. I'm a minister. We're having a minister's meeting. And I'm like, okay, God, now what's going on? Because 
If they're having a minister's meeting, I'm going to leave the teaching of the Bible study home because they canceled Bible study. But if I get there and I find out there's no minister's meeting, but everybody's showing up for Bible study, I don't have anything else to teach but the name of Jesus. And guess what happened? There was no minister's meeting. And everybody showed up. And all I had to teach was the name of Jesus. And the pastor walks in. And I said, great, pastor, tell us. So when we were in that service and we were forbidden to sing or pray in the name of Jesus because of the ecumenical, which is all these faiths that come together, other religions that are all together for the sake of a, some, some common good. I said, and I'm talking to them about the name and how important that name is. And I'm thinking, okay, this person is going to talk about the importance of that name too. We're in our own environment, surely. And this person said, well, you know, Minister Don, um, God knows who we pray to. Sometimes we have to compromise. Stop right there. I'm like, I don't believe she's saying this. And so needless to say, I just want you to know that the reason that I was able to continue on with that is because of the fire, the passion that I had. And I believe that if you've been born again and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have passion to be able to continue on believing and trusting in God and being a witness. Because in Acts, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be, not might be, you will be a witness of me. First, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen? So your three questions are, are you zealous for the Lord? Do you have a burning passion to serve the Lord? Two, do you have a zeal of desire to know who Christ is? To just sit at his feet, just wanting to be close to him more and more. I want more of you. Do number three. Do you even know what the Holy Ghost, or who, I should say, who the Holy Ghost is and the fire that comes with it? 